Hi everyone, so I'm going to try to show you how I made this alcohol ink tumbler. Um, so I had this tumbler that um, I would already done a design on, I didn't like it. So I just respray painted it and let it dry for a couple days. I put my isopropyl alcohol in this little bottle just because it makes it a little bit easier to control and kind of put exactly where I want it. So now I'm just trying to figure out what colors I want to start with. This one's going to be kind of like a mermaidy looking tumbler with bright purples and teals and pinks. So this is just on just the dry cup after being spray painted. And then I use my alcohol to kind of put over the top of the inks to kind of make it go where I kind of want it to go. And for some reason, this tumbler gave me kind of a hard time. The inks kind of went all over the place. So the final one I wasn't super duper happy with. So I might try doing um, either like a power wash kind of method on it. Um, kind of have this be sort of a tester to see how that would look. Just because it didn't turn out exactly like I wanted. I'm not sure if I used too many colors, but the inks were just going all over the place. So I'm not quite sure what their deal was today. But so I used my heat gun to kind of dry the certain spots. And I kind of usually try to go either from the top or the bottom and just kind of dry it as much as I can before I add another color. Because if you can't get the spinning down, the colors will just kind of go all over the place. That's probably the trickiest part, See, like right there. <laughs> it went right into the pink area where I didn't quite want it, but I thought, well, it'll work out because all these colors kind of look cool blended together anyhow. So then every time I add a new color, then I just try to dry it as much as I can. I try not to stay in one spot for too long, so I keep spinning the cup around. And I found for these skinny ones that putting it on our turner arm is a lot easier than trying just to use your hand, which is what I normally do, because it, it is really hard to spin it with just your hand. So then I'm going to add some of the pinata brass. This is my favorite gold metallic to use. I think it flows really nicely. The other metallics seem to kind of add more of a sheen, um, whereas this one actually will kind of clump together and give you kind of the little pretty lines, which is what I like. So I tend to use, sometimes I like go a little bit overboard with it. So I'm still trying to learn to take it easy sometimes because not everyone likes a ton of gold with all their other colors. So I'll speed up the rest of this just a little bit just because it's kind of long. Um, but you can see I'll just add all the different colors kind of wherever I wanted to add them. And I think I mostly used teals, purples, and pinks on this one. And then I added in the gold kind of every couple of colors and kind of tried to make it so when you look at the whole cup, there's not one area that has a lot more gold in another area. So I do spend a lot of time kind of just spinning it and looking at it, trying to figure out where I should add certain colors or anything like that. So, okay, I'm gonna speed this up just a touch. So I got all the colors added and just kind of looking at it, I, uh, oh, I guess I want to add some more gold right there. 
just kind of looking at it, kind of that middle area was starting to kind of drive me crazy just because it got a little too dark because too many of the colors kind of ran together and mixed together a little too much. I think that's what was kind of throwing me off because um, I normally like to leave a little bit of some bigger spaces here and there so it doesn't look too kind of all over the place. So I have a little video after this um, and there's kind of the whole thing looks like and I don't know that middle area was just bugging me so I decided that I would try to redo that a little bit and so what I we can do is just put some more isopropyl alcohol on a paper towel and you can just kind of wipe away the spots you don't like uh, it's a little bit harder on tumblers because the inks do kind of stain the spray paint underneath sorry my kids are um, arguing back and forth um, the inks do kind of stain underneath, so you can't just kind of take everything off in one nice clean swipe, but you can kind of fix little areas here and there if they didn't turn out exactly how you liked. Um, and then I also just kind of drip certain little areas with some isopropyl alcohol. It gives these little kind of bubble effects that I think look kind of neat, especially if it's this sort of theme tumbler. Um, just adds a little bit of something different sometimes it looks like you messed up a little so I didn't do too many and again I wasn't super happy with how this one turned out totally in the end so I'll probably do um, a power wash on here just because I wanted to try that for a while and uh, this will give me kind of a reason to do it and I think it'll look kind of neat okay so here is the video of the spot that I wanted to redo so as you can see, it's kind of hard to get the ink, especially if it's darker colors like this. Purples and blues are really tough to completely remove. So I tried to get as much of the color off as I could. And the gold is sometimes really tough to get off too because that kind of really, it's a little bit heavier than the other inks. So it likes to sit down and it's, we really have to sometimes scrub certain spots if you want to get the metallic off. So. So I wanted to add a little bit more pink and I tried to make it so that this area, the pink spread out a little bit more and it wasn't just the whole middle part was all these little lines of different colors. It's okay. You can eat it. So I'm just drying this. And again, I don't know why these inks were just running all over the place this morning, but they were. So I'm just spinning it and drying it kind of as I go. And then I wanted to add a little bit more of the kind of teal color because I noticed there were lots of purples that were in there. And then it started to run all over the place. But they do, some colors actually look really neat when they merge together like that. They can make totally different colors. And sometimes they look worse. Sometimes they look really bad. Sometimes it actually works really well. A lot of the pinks and blues will turn kind of a purple color. So if you have that kind of theme going, it actually works out really well. And then it started running down the cup. I'm not sure why. I was trying to hold it as level as I could, but the inks kind of go wherever. So there's that. And I do think it looked better than before. It wasn't so dark and kind of clumped up like it was before. But again, still wasn't 100% sure if I liked it or not. And I do try to keep some white spots here and there, but not any really big gaps because that tends to kind of stick out a little bit. And I think, I'm not sure, I don't remember if I added some more gold in this spot. I think I did just add a touch. Maybe not. And here's the final picture of the tumbler. And then once you get to this point, you let the inks dry for probably at least a day. And then you're going to spray this Kamar varnish on it. And you're going to do three light coats. You can do it all in the same day, but just three light coats. And then you're going to let that... Um, 
gas off for two days. So here's a little video I took of what I did, um, a coffee mug. And so you just spritz and kind of spin it on your hand. And then after the three layers, you let it dry for, and then you let it dry for the two days. And then this is just a little video of a cup that I've finished all the layers on. Um, I usually do about seven, eight layers of bright tone and then let it sit for a week. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know if you have any questions.